Let's talk about finishing and polishing. Any artisan knows what tool to pick up and which order do you use that tool to implement to get to a predictable spot. You start with products that will adjust the surface like the Shofu Extreme Discs or the Rainbow Discs. Things in order of grit, 60, 30, 20, 7. You need a burr kit for finishing and polishing to get the, pre, the scratches off the surface so you can create the hand polishing in the hand luster. Where do you wind up with the polishing? You need a velvet polishing cloth with ultrafine particles that when immersed in water can give you the hand luster, the hand polishing that you need to rival nature to create natural aesthetics. If you take your polishers right now to this, you didn't identify your boundaries. If you look at the adjacent tooth, this is your mesial transitional line angle right here that's reflective. If you look at over here on the lateral, this is your transitional line angle. But the tooth does bend in three places. Number zone number one is the emergence profile. And if you look at where the boundaries of that are, is right up here in the cervical third. Zone two is the face of the tooth. This is the widest and the brightest part. And this is zone three. This is why I tried it into the putty stent because this is bent in lingually. It's towed in. Also, if we look at the transitional line angles, what we want to do is draw very delicately the mesial transitional line angle, the distal transitional line angle. We want to draw, draw the mesial transitional line angle on the type it on tooth on number nine and the distal. This is what I'm going to mirror. So what I'll demonstrate now is just to individualize these line angles. All this geometric shape has to mirror the adjacent tooth before we go into the polishing sequence. So if I wanted to verify the face of the tooth very lightly, I stay away from my lines and just verify this. If I wanted to go up here on the cervical, I could verify that. If I wanted to go into the incisal and verify that I've bent that tooth in three different dimensions, zone one, two, and three, I can do that. Let's go into the red extreme disc. Remember, this is the one that's got the high tech from the semiconductor industry, and it has these little channels to express the ground up debris out the side of the disc. So this is gonna be at seven microns, and I'm just gonna go over before I go into the polishing sequence, Again, low RPM, very fine light dusting, and you can see I'm starting to remove my, my pencil lines, my boundaries right now. This is really a wonderful disc. You can see by using this disc already, it starts to pre-polish the tooth. Now, how do we create the micro texture? So, Let's start with the very fine white carbide burr. Again, you just look at the little bit of dust that comes off. What I'm doing is verifying the surface that I have no irregularities. Every place I go, I want to come right back the same way. You can see the uniform surface that I have. There's no irregularities. What I've just demonstrated with the white carbide burr is that my surface is indeed uniform. In the artistic burr kit is the yellow flame diamond. When I use this, I'm using it dry so I can see the dust off the tooth. And again, what I'm going to do is break the horizontal striations and any sort of reflection, and I'm going to build that in, and I'm going to customize it. This yellow flame diamond 
really demonstrates that you have indeed a uniform surface that you can start the polishing sequence. When we're producing the reflective zones, which is the central height of contour, the mesial and tra distal transitional line angle, I'm going to start out with one gloss. This is luminous oxide. And what I like about that, it's a detailing instrument as well. I can walk it all around the confines of the restoration and just verify it. You can see up here where I'm starting to remove some of the micro texture. I'm defining the face of the tooth, which is inside the boundaries where the one gloss is worked. Now, I've modified a one gloss. You can see what I've done. I've taken the tip off. I've rounded and made it into a blunt nose a luminous oxide polisher. Why do I do that? I don't want the point anymore. What I'm going to be doing now is defining the central height of contour, the mesial and distal transitional line angles that we had drawn in pencil. What do you see? You see a triad. You see the central height of contour, the reflective mesial and transition, distal transitional line angles. This is where the enamel is with the tooth. That's why we need some enamel shades in there. And if you would have covered the whole veneer with just a Denton shade A2, you only have two dimensions of color. You have hue and chroma. You have no value. That's why we like the enamel shades from Shofu because you can incorporate value-based restorations to mirror the adjacent tooth. To add a little bit more characterization, I've taken from the Artistic Burr Kit the Yellow Flame Diamond again, one of my favorites. Adjacent to the height of contour, we could put two concavities adjacent to this. So the final surface contour will have high contour, concavity, high contour, concavity, high contour. Again. Incorporated into the Artistic Burr Kit is the green stone. I'll show you how to use the green stone. Why would I use this is not to put the striations in like this, is just to create some diffuse architecture. If you look at the dust coming off, you can touch that in little tiny places to, called little eye catchers. I use this because it gets you a different type of look in effect. If you do not want to see the real striations, but you want to diffuse the light, that's what you use is the Arkansas stone. For our final polishing sequence, let's talk about your options. So a very light touch. You don't want to hear the drop in RPMs too much. You don't want to be torquing on this because this is not necessary because you've already created a very uniform surface. So you want to hit the high points. After the, the buff disc, let's go to the mini buff disc. And this is a smaller version. Go into your interproximal area. See the mesial transitional line angle is already reflective. Elevate the disc so you can just kind of crop right around and edge right around the cervical margin. You could pull it down a little bit. This is zone one. This is zone two. Get into your interproximals over here. Into your incisal, beveled about 30 degrees here. And then do your incisal. Where we had our pencil lines was right here on our transitional line angle here. Right here, this was the central height of contour. We bent the tooth in zone one as the emergence profile. Zone two is the face of the tooth where it's the widest and the brightest, the highest value. And zone three is where this bends lingually or toes in. And then you can see the mammalons that I put in, the halo that I flowed in, and the translucency. For the final step, what I'll demonstrate is using a super buff and a mini buff disc with submicron ultra-fine diamond polishing paste. For the final polish, what we're going to do is take the Super Snap buff disc with a generous amount of water and put it on the tooth and make sure we liquefy the surface. Then I'll take the direct dia paste. This is very fine, 
ultra-fine submicron diamond polishing paste and put your polishing medium on the tooth. I'll put it on the body of the tooth right here. We've removed the diamond polishing paste with the buff disc. Now I'm going to go back with the mini buff disc for the final hand luster and fine polish. That completes the polishing sequence. The grand finale. When you see how that light shines off the line angles, the center height of contour, the micro texture, the little Eiffel Towers that we put in, this is very gratifying to see that. This is how you create a lifelike veneer.